This video is the second part of the Spring Boot testing mini-series. In this video, we will look at how to test web controllers. First, we will discuss if unit testing controllers is enough. Then, we will discover what responsibilities the controllers are dealing with and how to test them. In the previous video of this mini-series, we discussed unit testing of Spring Boot applications. We saw how easy it is to write services in such a way that they are unit testable. If unit tests are fast and independent, should we also try to unit test our web and data access layers? In a typical Spring Boot application, we implement those layers as at rest controller or at repository components. Continuing with the example set in the first video, let's examine a REST controller implementation. We have a pay method that handles POST requests to an endpoint. The method takes in a couple of arguments like the order ID and the payment request body. The payment request body just has a credit card number. The method implementation calls a service method with the order ID and the credit card number and it then creates a payment response and returns that as a response entity. If we were to write a unit test for this controller, we could call the pay method with some arguments. Or we could call the get receipt method with some arguments. We could then make sure that the business logic in order service is called correctly and the controller returns the responses we expect. All good. Or is it? Let's take a closer look. We have annotated the endpoints with at post mapping and at get mapping. If we write a unit test, these annotations are not processed. So how do we know that an HTTP request gets mapped to correct endpoints or that path variables get mapped with at path variable? What about at request body? A unit test won't process these annotations either. If someone makes a POST request with the JSON body, how do we know the input is deserialized correctly? Once the input has been deserialized, we are validating some of the wheeled fields by annotating the request body with at valid. So how do we know that the validation takes place? As soon as the controller has called some business logic, it will return some responses to the caller. So how do we know that the output is serialized correctly to JSON? Finally, there is an exception handler that handles exceptions drawn from the application and translates those to an HTTP status code. We could test the method itself, but how do we know that the method gets called when an exception is, is drawn? As we can see, there are at least five distinct cases that unit tests are unable to verify. HTTP request mapping, deserialization, input field validation, serialization, and error handling. In a Spring application, the framework handles the concerns mentioned above. If we run the application, Spring will introduce all the required beans in the application context. But we need to be able to test these cases as well. So when we introduce Spring to our tests, it means that we are going to write integration tests. Spring Boot offers several annotations for testing different parts of the application. These annotations scan only a specific set of auto-configuration classes that only provide what is needed to test that part of the application. We start by testing the web layer of our application, where we only care about the previously mentioned concerns. We don't want to involve database calls in those tests, for example. To test our Spring MVC controllers, we can use the at web MVC test annotation. The annotation scans only beans for at controller, at control advice, and a few others related to the web layer. At web MVC test does not scan beans for our services. So we have to provide a bean for anything that the controller depends on. <laughs> 
Since we are not interested in testing the other parts of the application, we can mock the order service dependency with the at mock bean annotation. Spring Boot also auto configures a mock MVC bean for us so that we can auto wire that. Using mock MVC fakes HTTP requests for us, making it possible to run the controller tests without starting an entire HTTP server. By limiting the at web MVC test to a single controller, we are scanning beans only related to this controller. If we don't pass the controller as a parameter to at web MVC test, Spring will scan all the controllers, and we have to mock away all beans any controller depends on. Let's take a look at testing the different concerns mentioned before that the unit tests were unable to cover. So to make our mock service respond with something, we first create some objects here and make sure that Mockito returns those objects when the service is called. To verify that the controller handles HTTP requests, we call the mock MVC perform to initiate a mock HTTP request. The mock requests are constructed using builders for different HTTP methods like post, get, put and delete. So here we are creating a mock request for post and we pass the endpoint path as an argument. Taking it further, this builder takes arguments like content type, so we are setting content type to application slash JSON here. And then we pass in some JSON as the content, and the JSON just consists of the credit card number here. Once we perform the request, mock MVC allows us to set some expectations through the and expect method. So now we can verify that the request was completed successfully by checking the HTTP status code with the status is created result matcher. By making the request and setting expectations, we verify that the controller responds to a specific URL. The test also verifies that the content type is correct and Spring correctly deserializes JSON input into Java objects annotated with at request body. And the test verifies that the controller maps any path parameters annotated with at path variable. In our controller, we have annotated the request body parameter with the at valid annotation. We have also given the request object some constraints. So the credit card number cannot be null and it must be a valid credit card number. To verify that the fields get validated correctly, we can provide a request that is missing the field. If the validation fails, we should get an HTTP status 400 bad request as a result. If the request body has more fields, it can be tempting to validate all those fields in controller test. However, in controller tests, one could argue that it's more important to test that the validation happens. We could, for example, forget to annotate the request body parameter with the at valid annotation. But it's also possible to write separate unit tests for the validation rules. We first need to get an instance of the Java validator class and then we can call the validator methods directly and pass the validated object as an argument. We'll get a set of constraint violations as a result and can then make sure that the set is not empty. Since this is a unit test, it will run extremely fast. If we had many validation rules, we could validate the rules using such a unit test. In the controller test, we don't have to check all the rules. It is enough to trigger the validation once to make sure it happens. So far we have focused on verifying the requests, but what about the responses? It's not necessarily immediately evident, but Spring will automatically serialize our responses to JSON. 
So for example here all the date, credit card number and the amount will be serialized as a JSON object field. We can verify the results of that serialization using the JSON path matcher. So here we check that each of the fields for date, credit card number and amount have been serialized correctly in the JSON response. When we use JSON path, it takes the response body and allows us to write JSON path expressions to validate the results. Let's sidestep just for a moment into JSON path expressions. So I'm looking at the jsonpath.com online validator tool here. And we can see some default JSON here. When we write the JSON path expression, the dollar sign is the root element. So as we can see, the dollar sign matches the whole JSON. And dot is used as a child app operator. So if we write $.phone numbers here, we can see that the phone numbers collection was selected. And square brackets are used to access elements in an array. So if we write $.phone numbers index 0, we will get the first phone number object from that collection. And finally, if we use the dot operator okay, again and write dot number, we'll get the field inside the object. So that is our super quick interaction to JSON path. We can also write more complex expressions, but now we know the basics that cover most of the use cases when writing tests. Spring handles many error cases for us by returning some default HTTP status codes from the controller. However, if we throw any exceptions that we don't handle, we will get HTTP status 500 internal server error. So for example here, if the order is already paid, we throw an order already paid exception. And that would translate to HTTP 500 by default. Usually we want to translate these exceptions to more meaningful HTTP status codes. To translate our custom exception, we have this kind of exception handler in our controller. So it's making sure when the exception is thrown, we are actually returning HTTP status method not allowed. So the simplest way to test that the exception handler is doing its job is to add an expectation about the HTTP status. So first we make sure that calling the mock service throws an order already paid exception and then we can make sure the HTTP status is method not allowed. In the beginning we established that a unit test could not handle all the responsibilities the controller has. However, we haven't tested that the business logic gets correctly called. If we want to be sure that the controller and the service work correctly together, we have to test that the service methods are called with correct arguments. We need to know that we are passing the order ID and the credit number correctly here. So it turns out in the test side, we're already telling Moki to return a payment instance only when the pay method is called with these exact arguments. That means that if the method wasn't called at all or was called with some other arguments, this test would not work at all. So it's already verifying that part correctly. Since we always should aim at the test having only one reason to fail, we might want to make this verification a separate test. But it's good to acknowledge that we have to test the interoperability of the controller and the service as well. Spring controllers have a lot of responsibilities. To test the controllers thoroughly, we have to pay attention to all these responsibilities. Unit testing the controllers won't cover all the responsibilities the controllers have. Spring Boot provides everything we need for integration testing the controllers using at web MVC test. In the following video of this mini-series, we will discuss integration testing our persistence layer of the application.
Thanks for watching, stay curious and I'll see you in the next video.